Hi everyone, welcome to Bonnie Carolee Makes Cards. I love die cutting and Spellbinder's newest release, Adoring Florets Card Builder and Cinch and Go Blossoms is right down my alley. I'm drawn to sets that are versatile and play well with each other. These dies offer so many possibilities. Here are just a couple of cards that hopefully spark your creativity. I'm going to begin with the A2 size card. Both die sets will be used in the slimline and this four and a quarter by five and a half inch card. One of the things that I really like about many of the Spellbinders die sets is that the components, in this case the pocket and the medallion, are made up of several dies, giving you lots of flexibility in how you can use them. I began by using all three dies for the pocket held together with a little bit of post-it note tape to die cut mint cardstock. After removing the lacy insert, I will die cut some ivory cardstock to create a background. I really like the combination of pastel colors with ivory. I love dimension on my cards and so I've used the same pair of dies to cut sheet foam. For many applications, I often choose to use sheet foam rather than foam tape. It is much more economical and I think that it provides a clean look. When working on die cut cards, I use two different liquid adhesives. For anything that has fine die cuts, I will use Tombow Glue. When Tombow Glue is left to dry, it is tacky and I won't have to worry about glue seeping out from those fine die cuts. For everything else, I use Nouveau Liquid Adhesive. Use this rather than the Tombow Glue because in this application, I'm not letting the glue dry. I'm going ahead and adhering the two pieces together. If any glue seeps out, I can just wipe it off and I don't have to worry about the tacky mess that Tombow can sometimes leave. So that's how I roll two different applications, two different glues. I'm using my craft pick just to make some final adjustments to align that lacy overlay. I like my sentiments to have dimension and I usually will foam back them. Not sure what I was thinking, but I ended up die cutting four sentiments that I would stack. This gorgeous sentiment is quite fine, and so I am using the Tombow glue times four and setting them aside to dry before I stack them. I've mentioned that when this glue is dry, it is tacky, but it is also repositionable, giving lots of time to get those sentiments aligned nicely. The sentiment is adhered to the pocket and all the dimension of that sentiment really helps it to stand out from the background. Everything's going to be built on a layer of ivory cardstock that was cut with a stitched rectangle die. Quite a few blossoms were die cut also using the ivory cardstock. To go with the pastel theme of this card, I'm going to be working with Distress Oxide inks, Tattered Rose, Milled Lavender and Tumble Glass. This will provide just a hint of color. A dauber is used to apply ink to the center of the flower going about two thirds of the way up the petal and then a quick brush of color on the tip of each one. I've already determined which layers are going to go together to form the flower. Each flower will be done in a different color. Then the fun part, putting them together. I'm going to do some very simple shaping using McGill's Paper Blossom Toolkit. This kit consists of different sizes of ball tools and a molding mat. All of the flowers will be shaped simply. I'm going to be using a medium ball tool. To begin with the flower facing up, the center is depressed. The flower is flipped over. On the third closest to the tip, circular motions are made. Flower is flipped over again in the center depressed. Switch over to a smaller ball tool. Near the tip of the petal, I depress the ball, causing it to curl up. For the next layer, I didn't depress the center, I just went right to those flower petals on the back, making circular motions, causing them to form an upward arch. 
the center is depressed, I then switch to that smaller tool again and press down on the tips of those petals, causing them to curl. The black die cut stamens are just simply depressed in the center to make them pop up. The smaller flower is adhered to the center of the larger one, offsetting those petals. I use the holes in the center of the die cuts to make sure that that smaller flower is centered on the larger one and then it is topped up with the stamen. And then the ball tool again is used in the center to finish it off. These are simple techniques to use to give shape to these paper flowers. I only needed four so it didn't take long to do. I'm also going to incorporate this sweet die set bird and some music notes from Spellbinders Just a Tweet die set. The body is die cut from ivory and mounted on foam. A light brushing of tattered rose goes on the breast and the tip of the wing. The detail for the wing has been die cut from pink cardstock. The wing is mounted on a foam die cut. The pink detail is added to the tail. And then I do a little bit of trimming around the bird because the foam die cut stretched a bit. After I attached the tail, I remembered that I should have added a little bit of pink to the tip of the tail. With the help of the jewel picker, I'm able to add on that little tiny beak without too much fussing. After the final die cut details are adhered to the bird's head, the wing goes on. The music notes were die cut from matte gold cardstock and mounted on foam. This panel of black cardstock measures 5 and 3 eighths of an inch by 5 and 1 eighth and it's adhered to a card base that is A2 size out of Nina Classic Crest 110 pound cardstock. All of the elements for the card were laid out on the panel but not yet adhered. I just wanted to get an idea of how it was all going to go together. So now I can adhere my ivory panel to the card base. I always need a little bit of sparkle or shine on a card. The flowers are going to be overlapping, so I'm going to add a thin layer of Nouveau Glitter Drops White Blizzard to the tips of the petals before they go on. To start assembling my card, I'm going to begin with the largest elements. The largest flower will anchor all of these details and it's going to overlap the pocket. The second largest flower I'm going to tuck slightly underneath the larger one at an angle. I have a little bit of time to make some adjustments to make sure that that bird will fit above it. The flowers are held in place for just a few seconds until the glue sets up and then on goes the bird and it's slightly tucked underneath that medium sized flower. The smaller flowers are put in position. That last flower will be adhered directly to the pocket. The small flower will be adhered after the music notes just to make sure that everything's going to fit together. And now the final flower can be adhered. The centers of the flowers are finished off with ivory colored pearls. A tiny drop of Black Nouveau Drops is added to the bird's eye to help it stand out. Just a few of the tiniest pearls are added in around the background of the flowers, bird and music notes to complete this card. Card 2, this slim line is a perfect anniversary or Valentine's card. Two pieces of ivory cardstock and foam were cut to 3 and a quarter inches by 8 and a quarter inches. Just the pocket detail die was used to cut the bottom and top of one of the ivory panels. The fine die cuts were dotted with Tombow glue and set aside to dry until it was tacky. In the meantime, the plain ivory cardstock was adhered to the foam backing. When working with foam, I like to set something heavy on it for just a few minutes until that glue sets up. When the glue on the lacy panel is dry, it is positioned on top of the foam-backed one. 
It is then adhered to another ivory panel with some stitching detail that measures 3 and 5 eighths by 8 and 5 eighths inches. The medallion included in the Adoring Florette card builder consists of two dies. A little bit of post-it note tape holds these dies together to cut both pink cardstock and foam. They are stacked and adhered to the panel. Several dies from Spellbinder Cinch and Go Blossoms were used to die cut flower layers out of vellum. Like in the previous card, all of the layers were shaped before they were assembled into flowers. These pretty and airy blossoms were finished off with matte gold cardstock stamens. The adoring new sentiment was die cut from both matte gold cardstock and foam. The foam die cut was left in the background only removing the centers of the letters. After applying the liquid adhesive to the foam sentiment, the matte one is laid on top. The impression around the foam die cut makes it very easy to align the cardstock one. While the glue is drying on the sentiment, I go ahead and attach my panel to a card base that measures 3 and 3 quarter inches by 8 and 3 quarter inches. The Adoring Florette die set comes with a vine die and also a couple of styles of flowers. I'm going to use one of them. I know I'm continuing with that pastel theme that was in the first card. So the nice thing about these skinny vines is that they're a little bit flexible and I can bend them to follow the curve at the top of the pocket. Then I can go ahead and attach my vellum flower. At this point, I wasn't sure if I was going to use the stamens in this flower, but at the end, that's exactly what I did. The die for the vine also cuts a separate leaf, so for good measure, I add that in too. The sentiment is dry, and so I go ahead and remove it from the foam backing. I like to use a craft pick to help me release it. And then it's ready to apply a little bit of liquid adhesive, and then I line up that sentiment with its shadow on the medallion. And now to finish up the arrangement that is going to follow the curve along the die cut detailing at the top of the card. I first add in one of the fine die cuts and bend it so that it follows the curve. For all three vines, the liquid adhesive is applied just along that main stem so that I can pop up the leaves and the tendrils to add a bit more dimension. The two main flowers are adhered to continue to follow along that curve of the detailed die cut. The three vellum flowers form a triangle, adding a balanced look to the design. I hold those flowers in place for just a few seconds until that glue sets up. And this was the point when I decided that yes, the gold stamens had to be adhered to that lower flower. Like the previous card, the flower centers were finished off with the pearls. I love this jewel picker. It's economical and I've used it for a couple of years, but it's definitely to that point. It's not picking up like it should. I need to replace it. I've switched over to this pencil jewel picker. Yes, it's a pencil. I picked this up at a craft show about three years ago, used it for a while, put it away and forgot about it. What's cool about this is when it stops picking up, you just sharpen it and it's right back to new again. Thank goodness that I remembered that I had it. The detail die cut has these small circles which I'm topping up with small pearls. What potentially could have been a painful undertaking was simplified with this great little pencil. And like the other jewel picker, it also does a good job of picking up paper. So I use it to add in the little pink blossoms and tiny pearl centers. And that wraps up this pair of card featuring Spellbinder's adoring florette card builder and cinch and go blossoms. I love sets that you can stretch their use. Whether it's the size of card, or the occasion, or the fact that they work well with other sets. 
bring good value to these products. If anything that I've used in these cards interests you, you can find links in my YouTube description of this video or on my blog at bonniecarolee.com. Thanks for stopping by and as always, I appreciate your visit.